Hey everybody, for those who don't know me, I am Mark Hammerland. Uh, I want to take this moment to say hi to all my friends and colleagues who I haven't seen for so very long, and also to welcome uh, new people here. And then over the next seven minutes, um, I'm going to tell you about current work in the lab. And this is going to go quite fast, so if you have more questions, please contact me by email and I'd be happy to discuss. So, I'll uh, get to high resolution cellular genomics towards the end of this talk, but I wanted to start by giving an overview of current projects in the lab. So, we're very interested in the nervous system. The human nervous system is shown on the left, and on the right is C. elegans, and this is the model we use, and our goal is to discover fundamental and conserved mechanisms that work across nervous systems. So, one major thread of research in the lab is axon regeneration. And axons are the wires that allow the nervous system to transmit information. And if these wires get damaged, neurons don't work anymore. In C. elegans, we can study axon regeneration by severing individual axons with a pulse laser. And when we do that, what we can see here in this movie over the course of about eight hours is that injured neurons can regenerate. Here, the one on the right has formed a growth cone and grown back to its former postsynaptic field. And some current projects and people in the lab on axon regeneration are Alex Lynn Moore, who's discovered that axon regeneration is regulated by a secreted extracellular signal. Carrie Ann Davison and Martin Rosenfeld, who are following up on a discovery we made of a novel non-coding RNA pathway that's absolutely essential for axon regeneration. And Alex Abrams, who is characterizing how different types of neurons respond to age differently and what this means for their ability to regenerate. So a second major interest of the lab is neuronal survival and degeneration. So a uh, fact of nervous systems is that we generally don't get new neurons over our lifetime, and so we're stuck with the ones we have, um, which means that if you're 80 years old, you have a nervous system in which the cells are also 80 years old. Um, this doesn't always work out very well, and we're interested in the cellular mechanisms that underlie neuronal survival and degeneration. Um, one model we use is this really interesting mutant, where instead of surviving in a preserved fashion over the lifetime of the animal, neurons degenerate with age. And some current people and projects in this area are Eugene Wu, who's studying inside neurons how mitochondria traffic and localize to the correct place. Adas Tal and Chen Ding, who are characterizing a novel pro degeneration pathway. Um, and in collaboration with Sean Ferguson and Cell Biology, we've discovered that this pathway also seems to regulate degeneration in human IPS neurons. Um, Cheng Yi Feng, a new postdoc who actually joined the lab during coronavirus who's working on neuronal control of glucose metabolism. And I'm showing here our collaborator, Gojin Pekernas, who's faculty at USD, UCSD, uh, with whom we just got a CZI grant to also work on aspects of metabolism and degeneration. So a third major arm of the lab is looking at neuronal specification and identity. So there's many, many, many different kinds of neurons, um, and they are quite different from one another structurally and functionally. Um, and so a major question in the field are how are neurons specified and how does that work? C. elegans is a great model for this and just here's some data. We can um, track the generation of every single individual neuron type through the lineage. Um, and we have beautiful tools to look inside living animals and we can actually see every individual type of neuron and know which one it is. And some current projects in the lab looking at that. Um, Allison Kruchesberger is looking at the fate and function of undead neurons and neuronal homeostasis. Chloe Emerson is studying how developmentally programmed cell death is regulated, and this is critical for the development of nervous systems. And then Nandan Patel is studying um, dendritic self-avoidance, which is a really important way that the sensory nervous system uh, develops. And then the last thing I want to talk about today in the last couple of minutes is high-resolution cellular genomics. 
And I mentioned uh, a minute ago that different neurons are really different from one another. And C. elegans actually has fewer than a thousand cells in the whole animal, but yet it still is very important for the animal to make different kinds of neurons. And in fact, it makes over a hundred different kinds of neurons. And so neural diversity is critical for function. You know, what we'd like to know is how are different neurons different from one another? And our idea is that if we can know for every cell in the nervous system, all the genes that it expresses, this would be um, an, an incredible data set from which to start these uh, investigations. And so we established a collaborative project together with the Miller Lab, the Hobart Lab, and the Cessna Lab across three institutions, which was generously funded by the NIH in order to do this. And the basic idea of the project is to take animals that have some GFP or red marker in individual neuron types or in groups of neuron types, we can dissociate these animals, isolate the label cells by facts, um, and we can get lots of these cells from lots of animals. Um, and then we can do two different things. One thing we can do is single cell sequencing. Um, so this is a UMAP, and you have probably seen a lot of UMAPs today, but this is the best one. And the reason I think so is because we've been able to uh, get a identified cluster for every single neuron type in C. elegans. So actually better than that, we've discovered some new types. And so this allows us to see gene expression in every single neuron type in C. elegans. So this is an incredible data set. Um, we can also pool these sort of neurons and do bulk sequencing on them. This allows us to use ribosome depletion rather than poly A to build our libraries so we can get coverage across the whole gene body, as shown here in pink. We can look at non-coding RNAs, and we can get information about alternative splicing. And so some current projects in the lab that look at that are from Alexis, looking at control of alternative splicing, Alec, looking at genomics and sensory neurons, which are in a very diverse and cool set of neurons, and Manasa Basavaraju, who's looking at developing novel cell-specific markers. Okay, so thank you for your time. I appreciate your listening and I am going to stop the video now.